let, let, yeah. let's look at let's look at the tricorder example so you, what you're kind of seeing is like the outside case is made from some molded plastic or whatever there's loads sure. of suppliers there's little risk around getting that you can bargain and put people you know play them against each other in certain cases but say like when it comes to the laser element in the tricorder or whatever and there's only two firms that are making it so it's like they they have leverage over me and, exactly and the leverage like i i might have to pay way above what should be the norm for it because if i don't have it my entire product is worthless exactly so dynamics now, can arise for those laser components whereby it can spiral out of away from what demand and supply might indicate is that the point exactly boom there you go and those are called bottleneck products or, or bottleneck services or bottleneck suppliers. It works the same, you know, whether or not you're, you're talking about suppliers or vendors or whether or not you're talking about components. But that's exactly it. Yes. So th that, is, that, is a, that is a brilliant example because they pick and choose their customers, right, regardless of level of supply. So one, one, one good example of this from from the real world is so i was a procurement consultant for a big industry company in sweden uh and because it's making you know uh very sensitive kind of stuff you need ppe right and a lot of ppe so ppe stands for personal protective equipment these are things like you know ventilators and masks uh hazmat suits and, and and all the rest of it are you are you making meth is that what you're trying to tell me are you put, uh, cooking meth in a in a trailer park somewhere outside Gothenburg? Not, not not meth, but the, I, I do have a Breaking Bad story or a Breaking Bad related ad anecdote from from the time I was there. But but uh, we can we can come back to that later. But anyway, uh, so so you need PPE and PPE is expensive. But if you're talking, you know, a gazillion dollar company, it it you know it it, it barely makes a dent percentage wise. Yeah, so so it's nothing that you kind of think actively about, but this company did, and so I was put in in charge of essentially negotiating down prices for PPE, and we were just about to sign the agreement, literally within forty eight hours, and then COVID hit, and overnight, bingo, there was no PPE anywhere. And without PPE, there is nothing getting done. And what little you know one could get a hold of was, of course, going to the hospital. So, so one of the, the, that's one of the things that I ethically have kind of did, didn't sit right with me in the end was you know you know here I was ch chasing PPE, knowing that you know every single mask that I get a hold of is is a nurse who won't get a hold of. It, it was really one of those zero sum game situations. But anyway, th there you have a great example of a bottleneck product, right? You have something that costs 30 bucks, maybe. But if you don't have that 30 buck thing, you can't make your $30,000 thing or $100,000 thing. And so the worst thing you can do with these kinds of products is try to negotiate lower prices. <laughs> this is, you don't want to be the guy that these companies think, you know, is, 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 is a nuisance or you don't want to be on, on their bad side because the second something happens, you know, you will be at the bottom end of the, of, of the list of people that they actually want to apply to. And so the, the portfolio management, like general recommendation for bottleneck products or bottleneck services is to make sure like in your agreements and in your negotiations that, you know, always make sure to secure your supply. And if it costs, you know, a gazillion dollars, then, you know, it's still going to be better than you losing everything, right? And, and you're your entire production gets shut down. 